friends, Leslie from A Friend to Knit With. Welcome to episode 15 of A Friend to Knit With podcast. My name is Leslie Friend and today is March 17th, 2021. So if you celebrate St. Patty's Day, happy St. Patty's Day to you. It is a glorious Wednesday morning here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I think the high today is going to be 66. So spring is right around the corner. I am so excited about that. We had daylight savings last weekend in the States, and so the evenings are longer, although it is a little harder to get out of bed in the morning. Um, I am having an oat milk latte this morning, and hopefully you have something fun to drink and fun to knit. This is a podcast mostly about knitting, so if you're new here and you like knitting, then maybe you're in the right place. If you're joining me again, thanks so much for coming back. I'm gonna guess, blah, blah, blah. I guess I'm gonna just dive into what I finished. I only have one thing, that's why I haven't been here for since maybe January, because I have been knitting exclusively on my half and half triangles wrap. This is a free pattern over on Pearl Soho. It is lovely. I made it out of their linen quill which the pattern calls for, which is uh, Highland wool, alpaca, and linen. The colors I used were heirloom white, which is just, I don't know if it's their undyed, but it's just that. And then I paired it with the uh, dark denim. And I love how the white picked up the little flecks in the denim. This is what I had left of I made the large. The large called for six skeins, three of each color. I had quite a bit left. I don't know, that might be two thirds. I don't mind because I can, I'm sure, use this for something else. This will not go to waste because it's dreamy yarn. The small version of this calls for four skeins. I don't know if you, if anybody's made the small. I know Tara, did you make the small? Um, did you have much left over? I'd be interested in knowing how much was actually used of that on the small version. The only thing that you have to do with this knit is knit and the short rows, which Caddy Jacks Knits is hosting a knit along with this. It's going to end, it, you don't have to have it finished by then, but they would like to have everyone meet up and ride back and be wearing these which i haven't even heard i have i know it's not on the calendar yet i don't think so i looked maybe a month ago to see if it was on the ride back website but did not see it hopefully we can at one point you know even if it's just virtually everyone just wear their half and half triangles wrap knit alongs are great because it just seems to bring the community together and it's exciting to see the color combinations that everyone is using. So Caddy Jackson demonstrates in one of their YouTube videos how to do the German short rows because on one section you are shortening your color and on the other section you are growing your color because it is knit Oh, that's, the, yeah, that's the bind off, like that. I haven't measured this, but I did count the stitches and I think it was about 133,000 stitches. I am just goofy that way. I like to see how long projects take and I love math. Maybe that's why, but hop on over to watch the tutorial if you're confused with German short rows, um, but they worked beautifully in this. They're definitely my short row of choice. And then I last week put a uh, podcast out demonstrating how I did my edge because the pattern does not call for this, but 
I really like the finish of a slip, slipping the last three stitches at the end of the row with the yarn in the front. So then when you turn it, the yarn's in the back. And some people mentioned that maybe it's an I cord edge, but I cord edge is done a little bit differently. Amy from the Meaningful Stitch flipped her last stitch. So it doesn't look quite as thick, I guess, as mine does. But either way, I think it's just a nice finish rather than just the pearl bumps along the edge. But, you know, the choice is yours, whatever you want to do. But I'm going to show you. Hopefully I can show you how to wear this or how I like to wear it. There are many, many ways to wear this. But what I've been wearing it nonstop since I finished it. And what I find I like to do is fold it so that you have a little of the other color, your second color showing along the edge. And then, okay, I'm gonna squat, squat down. What I do is bring that under there and catch it with the top layer and then fold that under, kind of like you're swaddling a baby. And that just seems to hold it together nicely. And then the angle is kind of on one side of your body, but it's kind of like a big hug. I'm not kidding you. So you can do it, you know, either way. What I love is it's kind of like a two for one or even more than two for one. But if I was gonna have the navy on the outside, I would do it like that just to show it's so pretty to show your other color and tuck that under there bring this around and tuck it under there and what's nice is it's not constricting at all either although it is tight around you and warm so that's that and i also found that i like to wear it the half and half way oh i wanted to show you well karen show you that in a minute. Karen from Casarina. I think I'm saying that correctly. Am I Karen? Casarina girl. Cause I looked at all of the projects on Ravelry and she just wore it such a cute way. But I found that I also like to wear it this way. I'll show you her way in a minute. Okay. shoulder different and then isn't that cute that way too feels great that way but this is how Karen wore hers in one of her pictures she well I think she had it all one color let's go with the blue it's showing a little bit of white Oh, I don't think she did that. But anyhow, she had it with her sides down here and belted it. Just so cute. So that's another way you can wear it. Two. I guess I'll grab the white out. Okay, one under here. And then just because this is, you're pulling this tight, it clips, it holds that in, kind of clips it in place. So that is how I like to wear the half and half triangles wrap. I know there are tons of ways, so would love to see how you are going to wear it. I think I'm gonna be too warm with that though, but I am gonna wear it as my coat today. Anyhow, it was just such a joy to make. I was, in February thinking, when am I gonna finish this? And then all of a sudden it was finished and I've been online looking at new colors to make another one. Since I love garter so much, it will be um, a joy to make another one. And I don't think I'll just knit on that exclusively this next time. Maybe that'll just be something that stays in a basket. I love garter stitch so much and I wanted to share the Hannah Falkenberg sweaters that are knit exclusively out of garter stitch. And I don't know if anyone has heard of her. She is um, a Denmark designer. 
I have not seen a lot of her in the past few years, but she started to pop back up on a site called uh, Unling. Is that right, Nadine? Unling, O-N-L-I-N-G. I will link it below. She usually sells her yarn in kits and it's a Shetland wool. Now you can buy her wool. This is how I learned the beautiful slip stitch um, along the edge. It's because Hannah does it on her sweaters. This is called the Ballerina. I have made three of them. And this is probably, all three of them are probably my greatest accomplishment in knitting. They're not easy. Um, my mom and I knit several of them. My mom knit more than me. I'm not kidding you. I think she knit because there's a lot of different styles. She didn't knit the same one, but she maybe made a couple of mermaids. I don't know if she, yeah, she made a ballerina. She made my dad one. Anyhow, she loved these patterns too and Hannah Falkenberg kits. I have two kits to give away and I am gonna show them to you because my friend Cam, thank you Cam. Cam is a uh, incredible needle pointer and she also is a great knitter. I think she just was cleaning out and feeling overwhelmed. So I have two kits that I was gonna give away. I have, she asked me if I knew of anyone that needed them and I said, well, I will certainly ask my friends and we'll do a giveaway. Um, so this is the ballerina colors. Oops, that gloss you probably can't see. I'll show you the yarn. Um, the ballerina style is a little full in the back. The, it's sort of pleated. I will show you mine. Mm, this is my absolute favorite. And then the mermaid style is a little fitted through the waist. I have not made a mermaid but that's the mermaid style. That's the ballerina style. And I will show you the ballerina colors. So the body of the ballerina is this. Her ballerinas, Hannah Falkenberg kits, are either two colors or three. And this kit that I have to give away is a three color. So the, the body of the sweater is mm, this yummy, green. It's like my favorite green. And then stripes of this with a little bit of accent of the fuchsia. So the teal the fuchsia are the accent colors. I'd like to show you the picture. It's just super, it's a glossy photo. So that's what that would look like. And then the mermaid is, oh, I love these colors so much too. And I can't tell, I think the orange is the body of the sweater. And then stripes of this, definitely more tonal. Um, I'm not saying that this is super hard, but it it's not easy either. Um, so if you are up for it, you know, by all means, please let me know if you like the ballerina or the mermaid. I'm gonna show you what the ballerina looks like. I love these sweaters. I adore them. If I had to get rid of all of my sweaters and only have this, then this would be what it is. It's, I honestly wear this all spring long. Um, it's just easy. Isn't the back so much fun on the ballerina? I wish I had a mermaid to show you, but so this is one of my ballerinas. I wear both of these in the spring and this one I mostly wear in the uh, fall. And I wear this all fall. I probably made these 12 years ago, 15 years ago. Um, I don't know, Billy. So guys, have you ever watched Billy from Show and Tell? Hi, Billy. 
uh, she puts vintage sweaters on her podcast and they are really fun to look at. I don't think this would fit that category yet, right, Billy? But um, they're just a classic sweater. So this is the ballerina. So if you're interested in making either one of these, just leave me a comment and uh, leave me your first choice and then your second choice. Or if you only want that one, and if you want and didn't want the other one, just say that also. Um, I think there's enough for both sizes. It's not a one size quantity of the yarn in the kit is sufficient for making the largest size. So you can make either the small or the large. She gets her little tag that you can put in there, but I was gonna only put my name in there if I was gonna put any. <laughs> my mom and I used to giggle like, we're gonna make this sweater. It's gonna take us a long time with a lot of brain power and we're going to put somebody else's name in it. No way. So that was funny, but I ordered a kit not too long ago for a ballerina. It's still not here. They are warm. I'll show you. I think I have like some grays. I think it, mine was grays. It was on the um, Oomling website. If you want to try your hand, please leave me a comment. Uh, let's just say until I podcast next. And it seems like I podcast every four to five weeks. You probably have that much time so if you're watching this within a month from when i'm filming then go ahead and enter um if you want that's that that's the only thing i had off my needles my half and half triangles wrap and whoops i had a phone call i only have one thing on my needles right now i have a couple that are in the lineup and then i'll show you those because I'm super excited about those. But the hipster shawl, I know a lot of people have made this. This is by Hohi Locatel, and I made this out of the baby yak that the pattern calls for, and it is dreamy. Here we go with the garter again, and then just these very cool yarn overs, and then you crisscross to make this sort of design. Um, so I made this last year or the year before, and then Hohe came out with the lightweight version. So if you made this or bought this pattern, then she gave you the lightweight version, which is made out of a fingering weight yarn. I'm using the Magpie fibers, and this is Cinder, color Cinder. Here we go with the garter. So I'm still practicing the Continental. And then I switched to English for these and this pattern, I switched to English. It uses one ball, so it's like a one ball wonder, which I love. And if you have a lot of fingering weight yarn hanging around, then, you know, it is a great stash buster for that. I don't, this is very quick too. I almost wish, and if I have a couple balls of fingering weight yarn, I might try to make it on a bigger needle. This is size seven needle. So she uses an eight needle on her regular one and then a seven needle with the fingering weight yarn. I could have it just a little airier and maybe a little lighter. And I love this neon pink so much and have been dying to try to use it. So I'm just going to do the edge love color so much. I just don't really like to wear it that much. I don't know. I wear a little more neutrals, but I'm going to do the tassels. I'm going to do this bind off edge and the tassels out of the neon pink for my summer pop of color. And hopefully that will appease my neon mind that wants to add a little neon to her life. So that's all I have on my needles right now. I'm loving working on this though, using my continental knitting. I took a lot of notes off of my number 13 podcast. So many people talked about how they 
do knit English and want to learn Continental. I, I've, there were maybe two people that said they knit Continental and want to learn English strictly for two-handed knitting. But most people that wanted to try a different technique were English knitters wanting to switch to Continental. So they were throwers wanting to switch to uh, picking. So out of all the comments I had, and I loved your comments, thank you so much if you left me a comment. Uh, there were about 75 people that knit Continental as opposed to about 50 people that knit English. So there are more Continental knitters than English style. Go figure. And then the amount of people that knit both, were, there were a handful of you that knit both ways. So good for you. I, I'm going to join you in that group. And there were about 15 that knit both. Uh, five people said that they're flickers. And then some people talked about Norwegian purling, Norwegian style, Portuguese style, and Scottish style. And there was just a handful of all of those. Yep, about 15 said they definitely want to learn a different technique that they, not to switch from one to the other, but just learn something different in their knitting. And there was only one person that learned Continental and does knit that way, can knit that way, but she went back to English and that's Lisa. So I found that, Lisa Silverman, so I found that very interesting. And I wonder if I will at some point want to go back to English. Now, I'm not, I haven't even put time into the purling because my projects have all been the knit stitch. So, I don't know, purling is a little more difficult in continental style. But thanks guys for putting in your two cents for that. I loved reading the comments. Um, if you're interested, that was episode 13 uh, when I talked about my continental journey. So, all right, what is coming onto my needles are a couple things. I have, well, I have these offhand design bags. I don't know, maybe these are vintage, Billy. They're not that old, but she did use vintage materials to make these bags. I love them. I have a handful of them. They get used a lot. But I bought some Baby Camel from Pearl Soho. My friend Christine and I just were gushing over this. It is so yummy, and I've never knit with Camel before. So it will be a first. And then my friend Nadine helped me find a pattern. So I usually find the pattern and then buy the yarn. Do you guys, or do you guys find the yarn and then the pattern? This time um, I found the yarn and then the pattern. And I love tea knits and I'm gonna make the Sunday tea, which is there. It's just a little short sleeve, I think that this will be perfect for that. And it can be a little layering piece in the winter, or I think it is nice and light enough for even cool summer nights. I kind of see this with a pair of white jeans. Let's see, white jeans. Um, so that's I'm going to cake up those balls, hopefully today or tomorrow, and get started on that. And then I have another offhand design bags bag that I purchased a long time ago, which is just one of my favorites. I love the shape of this. And when you open it up, you can just see all your yummy yarn in your project. But I love Andrea Mowering's striped sweater and Gina from Skein Cocaine put together some kits for the, I was always a little overwhelmed with, I wanted to make the striped sweater, but with the colors. And I'm sure I have some stash yarn that I could use, but this was just really yummy. So this is Gina from Skank Cocaine, her yarn, and she kitted this. 
I think there are more colors than Andrea. I did not print the pattern because our printer is broken, but I think that there are more colors than Andrea's sweater. She has one that has two colors, I think, and then one that has a repeat of colors. And in this, there will not be a repeat, just a stripe of each. And it is out of her fingering lux sock yarn. It is merino and nylon. Where's her tie? I'm not sure if I'm supposed to use this with there, but it all came together in the kit. So I haven't looked at the pattern really. I purchased it, but I haven't downloaded. I mean, I downloaded it, but I haven't printed it. Like I said, and I didn't look at it. So I am very excited to get started on that also. Those little cakes will be so cute because I've never even um, caked up the, any minis. I've never worked with minis. Can you believe it? No, I've never worked with mini. So I'm excited about that. So anyhow, hopefully you have something on your needles that you just love and that makes you so happy because we all deserve a lot of happy. And yeah, if it's not bringing you joy, like I've said before, find something that will because there is so much out there to knit the projects and the yarn are endless thank you so much for watching um again leave a comment below if you want to make one of the hannah falkenberg kits they are extremely fun and hopefully you will enjoy it as much as i do all right until next time Thanks for watching, and remember, you always have a friend to knit with. Take care.